Um, so we were speaking out about power lifters. Yes. So I have some ironies that I wrote down of just like general stuff, but let's start with that. Uh, the irony, like these are just like ironies as a kid that you grow up thinking irony in the layman's terms. You're considered strong, a strong human being, in my opinion, or I work out at a gym very regularly and, oh, wow, little Sally, she can do four pull-ups or, you know, whatever. And then, man, uh, Neil, he can deadlift. He can deadlift 600 pounds. He's strong. And I, th I, I like find that so ironic because I'm seeing some of these very strong people and I'll put them in some compromise testing that we are learned through uh, PRI and they're anything but strong. Right. But the rest of the world and like I grew up thinking that and I still have to battle. Like I'll look at someone doing a pulley weight and I'm like, I, I think I'm stronger than her. Who cares, Casey, if you're stronger than her? You like it does she's doing more weight than you. That's fine. But you actually know what you're doing maybe over here and you're trying not to. Do you know what I'm talking about though? Well, the we irony all have it. strong. We, absolutely. We all have an ego. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I want to be conventionally strong. Yeah. Uh, I had my 300 pound deadlift and it was fantastic. Yeah. But, um, you know, for me, that was a lot, not for other people, but yeah, it's right. strong, strong. They have, people have a certain type of strength, but you know, it's funny. It's like the whole functional, is it functionally strength? Is it functional strong? Of course, no one had any clue what that really meant. Yeah. And years ago when it was like a big word because right. they still didn't realize everyone was living in extension. So even they thought they were functionally strong. They really weren't. Not, yeah. no, not in this, if you're just finding functional strong, functionally strong as like being able to move through life without compensation. Right. Or being strong without having to use compensation. That's how I would say the, the, the desired type of strong is. Yeah. To be able to move and lift without compensation. But the moment you're compensating too much, which we know power lifters are, and again, yeah. I'm not against power lifting. Up. Like I love yeah. lifting heavy weights. I would still do it if I could. Yeah. Um, but it's got to be tempered with the fact that you can't be powerlifting when you're trying to sleep. You yeah. can't be powerlifting when you're trying to watch TV. You are going to ruin your life. Yes. And I always say, like we were discussing before, you yeah. don't want to become me. <laughs> but you are on your way. <laughs> yeah, I think you should come out with some commercials. You know how they did the smoking ones with like the crippled lungs? Oh, God. You should be like, I could just somehow show them. put your childhood pictures up. And <laughs> well, I should. I, well, that the, the picture of me with my lateral pelvic tilt and my body's literally just like like this. I, I, yeah. That that's what people are lifting themselves into because yeah. they're becoming they will be so ungrounded because you know the neck extension ungrounding you. It will change your vision, will it not? Yes. It will change how you use your vision, will it not? And any patterned repetitive movement of your eyes or your body, which your eyes are your body, yeah. uh, will put you stronger into that pattern and yeah. don't know it. So what's interesting on the power lifter front, there's a gym here in town that I saw one or two and then now they're just coming in like hotcakes. And I really do enjoy working with them. Um, you know, and I, I do have to have these honest conversations, but what's really interesting. And, and so that, the irony of strong, what is strong? Yeah, you know, yeah. is, is it really that you look chiseled? Is it really that you can deadlift? Um, I, I think, you know, with COVID times, we might all look at healthy and strong a little different. Wow. It's not about your blood work and your panels and how much muscle you have on you. It's how well can you breathe <laughs> in <laughs> yeah. and out? Can you perfuse in your body? I don't care if your uh, cholesterol is under 200 <laughs> or your blood pressure is perfectly one. I mean, that probably has something to do with it. But so this whole, this whole, um, you know, idea of strong and uh, health is just kind of, it's just been this paradigm shift a little bit. So okay. these um, weightlifters that are coming in, and they, they always come in pairs. They bring their friend, which is really nice because then I don't have to re-explain a lot of the stuff again. But the two that I had um, recently were both, you know, they're always concerned about how low they can squat and it doesn't ever feel right. They're right. very right. articulate that, you know, that just doesn't feel right. Um, my hips feel tight. I don't have, I have bad this, I bad that. I'm like, let's not, let's throw the terms bad out. Let's, let's just get rid of that. Uh, and they're really concerned about the pelvis. 
both people just this week and, and even the week before that I saw some um, had nothing to do with their pelvis, <laughs> like zero. One couldn't blow up a balloon, mm -hmm. couldn't blow up a balloon. I don't know how much he's deadlifting or squatting. Um, he did by the end of it felt great by the time we were done. And then the other one was, we've talked about this before, but a torsion pattern up in the, in the cervical. And once we got everything moving a little better, I did a little manual on him on his rib cage, um, the pelvis corrected itself. And so here he is, here they are, you know, hammering in these pelvis because that's what feels tight and that's not it at all. Um, but going back to them being in a pattern, so you literally, I don't know, do you know much about powerlifting? Yeah. Yeah, you do three motions. I mean, you do three uh, lifts. Yeah, I know, I know about, I, look, before yeah. I, I used to love weightlifting. Okay. And okay. I studied every single thing I could possibly get my hands on when it came to weightlifting. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I still like it. I still, I still think it's interesting and very impressive. But yeah. so yeah, no, I know, I know plenty about yeah. it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So um, I really, I enjoy lifting weights too. So it's, this is not a knock on any sort of weightlifting in the sense. It's just the understanding because I'm seeing these people at 20 years old and yeah. they're already feeling this way. Yeah. Um, but it's a, uh, when we think about weightlift, powerlifting, we'll talk about that specifically, there's bilateral movements only. There's not really any unilateral and they're all in one plane of motion, primarily pulling yeah. in a sagittal. So, you know, I think just kind of helping those guys understand that you were kind of saying it, when you go to bed at night, you, you don't want to still be pulling <laughs> and your body literally never stops pulling because that's what you do every single day. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, the, yeah, so it's an interesting point about <laughs> the pelvis that once you do this long enough, you realize you can get a pelvis neutral just by having them look a different direction. So yeah. just because that's a neurological impulse, it's a, it's inhibiting a pattern. And that's what you just really have to do in the beginning is inhibit. doesn't mean they're stable in any sense, right. but to inhibit a pattern and reposition to turn off hip flexors. Mm -hmm. You know, if that pelvis repositions now, they can adduct and abduct. You didn't touch the hip flexors. Mm -hmm. You didn't do a 90-90. You didn't mm -hmm. shift the pelvis. You just got them to do something different mm -hmm. that their body hadn't and brain had not been experiencing before. And obviously it's, I mean, Having them look to the right probably won't work, but if they're on their left, if they shift their weight to their left and they look to the left or whatever, and feel the ground come up, all that stuff, that's usually going to, for them, I don't know about for torsions, although yeah. maybe, but, uh, you know, I think in my experience, for 70% of the population, that's going to improve the majority of their tests fully or by 85%. Mm -hmm. You know, even lateral flexion of that neck to the right clears up like that once they sense the ground coming up underneath the left foot. So let's, can we talk about that ground coming up? Cause this is, <laughs> <I would> <laughs> well, this is what I'm seeing a lot in the fitness IG world. We'll just call it. <laughs> um, there's this big craze about putting um, plates underneath your heels. Oh yeah. And they, I remember that. And the power and the power lifters actually wear the elevated yeah, shoes yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. Right. And they were kind of telling me we've been doing plate and these guys have been, hitting it pretty hard with some of our PRI pelvis repositioning because they got them as a trickle down, yeah, which yeah. is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the problem is that that wasn't the problem. <laughs> yeah. it's, you're, 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 you're at the wrong end. Yes, exactly. That's the problem's a little stuff. higher up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Cause uh, every time you're deadlifting, you're actually trying to deadlift with your, yeah. your exams, you know, yeah. but um, what are your thoughts on these elevated heels and putting your feet oh. up for all these lifts that is popular? Okay. This is like the question of what do you think about the infrastructural angle, which I try to avoid as much as possible. Yeah. Uh, this doesn't have to be a negative thing. No, yeah, so. to be honest, uh, on certain issues that you'll find in strength and conditioning or physical therapy, I choose to remain, much like gambling, I choose to remain ignorant okay. <laughs> because I, I don't even want to know because I know what I do and it works. And I don't need something else to be like, huh. I have no problem challenging my thought processes. Yeah. But when things don't make intuitive sense to me, mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to go down that road because it simply just doesn't make sense to me. And I, and in my life, I trust my intuition as we were talking before, but you know, I know, but that's been, they've been, people have been doing that since like for, for as long as lifting weights has been, have been around. I sure. remember, you know, when I was used to read weightlifting magazines in the 80, late eighties and early nineties, and now I'm dating myself, but they would show a picture of people squatting with the block underneath. I think even in the starting strength, mm -hmm. uh, in that world famous starting strength book, I think he shows people squatting with something underneath their heels. I can't, I'm not sure because I don't know if I have the book anymore, but that was completely a normal thing to get better depth. Yes. But what's the point? <laughs> yes. How is that going to help you in the, in the long run to de-pattern if you notice that a pattern is the issue to begin with? Well, that's a pretty good point you make there. But if you don't understand patterns, then, then of course do it. Yeah. But if you're coming from a perspective like I or you may have, uh, it doesn't make sense to me to do that because you're going to, maybe you will to get stronger, but is that functional strength? Is that true strength? Or is that, hey, I can't do this, so let's give me some help to do something, but it's not really making you function, functionally better. Right. From my perspective. Yeah. So um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Yeah. From the perspective of what I'm trying to do, which is help people get out of pain. Yes. Now, if it's just to get bigger quads and get stronger with a lift, mm -hmm. and that's what you want to do, go ahead. But that's not what I want to do for people. I right. want them to be that strong that you were talking about, which is functionally strong, which means they can breathe and blow up a balloon right. and not have to move with compensation. I just don't see how that's going to happen. Yeah. But if that's not their goal, then it doesn't matter. Right. No, you're right. You're so that's, right. How I, that's how I look at it. Oh, I like it. That's a good, that's a good answer on that. I would say I align with that. I, uh, the, the biggest misnomer in all of lifting, power, I don't care, CrossFit, um, even the weightlifting I do is most of us are rolling around, not grounded. So essentially raising the ground up from part of the body to me doesn't, doesn't really make sense because then you're actually losing the sense of the ground you never had. And right. so, and then you kind of think, well, you've got all these extended human beings that are almost walking up a hill all day because their midlines potentially are shifted, meaning, you know, visual. Yeah. So are we just accommodating them into yeah. that pattern? So now they don't feel like they're climbing up the hill. Now they feel like they're, you know, so yeah. I get the point of why people do it because they do feel like you have more range of motion. But my suggestion would be, why not put the weight up on blocks and bring the weight up a little bit? And then you can still work through your range on the ground, you know? Which Those is something that people have done forever also, which is, yeah. that's why pin pulls, you like, instead of, if you can't deadlift, you, you bring the, the bar, you know, you, you rest the bar on a, in a squat rack and you bring it up to your shin level and you, and you deadlift from there. Right. So. To me, that's a safer alternative if I had to. Have oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think. I, you know, lifting up the heels, I guess that increases their ability. Does that even change their dorsiflexion? Um, if your weight is shifted back, yes. It gives them a, an increased sense, potentially, if your weight's back on your heels because the ankle. But if you load into your toes like everybody's loaded, even if you feel the heels, you're actually not increasing your dorsiflexion. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's opening up, if you're standing, mm -hmm. in the standing position, it's opening up your plantar flexion, right? Right, right. So is it, so what, is it actually, is it actually increasing your dorsiflexion by doing that? Or is it accommodating your tendency to dors uh, do plantar flex? You actually, you actually get dorsiflexion by doing that when you go into that squat. Right, just without your elevated heels. No, no you're talking with, about with it elevated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yes. So you're basically accommodating the pattern that you're already in, just making yeah. it, giving yourselves a little bit more room to work through the already plantar flex yeah. sensor tone. Yeah, so you're not yeah. actually... So it's really not giving you more dorsiflexion mechanically right. but That's i think it might sense it since like sensorial you might feel like you're getting more 
Does that make sense? Because you're, because you're starting from a different position. Yes, but I don't think mechanically you're getting more. And but I don't know. I haven't studied that up enough. Oh, I, yeah. I'm going to have to get out my tape measures for this one because I'm not really positive. <laughs> Because then I it, see it's a very popular thing. I, I yeah, it you do so, see. It. But of course, if you can't dorsiflex, you can't truly squat. So you just handicapped your dorsiflexion. Yeah, well, that's what it. Yeah. From my, from my pattern perspective, that's what it would. Sure. Huh. Yeah. That's kind well, of. Huh. Well, that's going to be something you're going to have to talk about with your power lifters. I know. Maybe I already. Maybe you'll have to watch. Do you have like a, can you use like a goniometer for that? Oh yeah, I could and measure it actually. See what goes yeah. on. Yeah. Cause I'd be yeah. really interested to know. Cause I, I honestly, I don't really know. But I feel like it also depends on what the shin does. I mean, the shin should move forward as uh -oh. you squat. So that should. And are they in a sumo deadlift or right. I'm yeah. sorry, sumo squat or right. sumo deadlift? Or start to kind of get a lot of different. How wide are they going? Mm -hmm. Most yeah. of them are, yeah, I mean, one of them was complaining about his sumo deadlift yesterday. So yeah, that would be a kind of a different component. Oh, I don't know that they're doing that, elevating their heels when they're doing a sumo or not. I don't know. Hmm. But, but I wonder about that sumo squat. I mean, they are really externally rotating those legs. Mm -hmm. That yeah. are already positioned externally. So externally rotate. Yeah. And huh. Well, so that's another thing that's going to push them into a extension pattern right do you ask them or do you have them take their their shoes off and ask them where they feel their weight on their feet but yeah mostly every every patient actually yeah okay. no, no so do i um yeah. do they tend to feel it on the outside of both feet yes or grip toes they kind of grip <laughs> you can see white like white knuckle toes you know which is always a sign of i remember i did that with my friend one time and he did not believe me on any of this stuff. Yeah. So, but he, he, he came anyway. <laughs> and uh, I, had him, I had him go into left stand. Now, he, he had a missing molar or two. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't even know if he has an updated prescription with his, with his eyes. But uh, he was notorious for having really bad vision when we were young. And I put him into left stance. And, you know, he's just standing there in left stance. And... He couldn't breathe, and his toes went. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think we have a problem here. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, you know, I think I think I forget what else we did, but I'm pretty sure his eyes are off. But but again, the visual influence and the teeth influence how they influence right. each other. It's hard to know. Which we know he has an autonomic issue. Right. The fact is. He had to hold it. He could not. And he even said, I can't really breathe right now. Mm -hmm. Like He could. That was my friend, Josh, who lives in Nashville, Tennessee at this point, always from New Jersey. His conscious thoughts were not running the show. Mm -hmm. his, his autonomic nervous system had become Josh completely. Yeah. That was saying, no chance am I going to let you relax while in less stance. And that is a scary and eye-opening um, uh, experience. Uh -huh. When you can't overrule your, your own body. body. Yeah. You realize you are not in control. 